There we are. And tonight, as I have Rupa here, I'm going to make use of her. Rupa, would you like to officially open the meeting? I certainly will. Welcome one at one and all. Thank you very much, Lord Zoom or John Drinkwater, whichever identity you care to have today. Uh, thank you for those of you that have joined this really important webinar. Um, ultimately, all of our clubs are independent entities affiliated to Toastmasters International and need to be run a certain way. Our facilitator or presenter this evening is Sarah Beckwith, and Sarah has been a member of Toastmasters since 2013. She is currently a member of two Toastmasters clubs in D91 in Central London, Society Speakers and 104 Debaters. Outside of Toastmasters, Sarah has held numerous leadership roles in Junior Chamber International, also known as JCI, that is a similar voluntary uh, personal development and leadership organisation. And in 2016, she was the UK national president for that organisation and has developed a passion for parliamentary procedure. Um, as a result of that, um, a couple of years ago, she was District 91's parliamentarian um, and appointed to that role. Tonight, she'll talk about running a Toastmasters Club business meeting, including why they are important for both the club leaders and the members, what decisions are made in these meetings and how to prepare, run, participate in an effective, engaging meeting. Sarah, over to you. Thank you very much, Rupert, for that introduction and everyone. It's great to see you here this evening, as Rupert said. I think it's an important topic and it's one that I'm very passionate about. Uh, having been parliamentarian, um, and a parliamentarian is essentially the, the queen of the rules, I think, uh, as someone used to call me, it's the person who makes sure that things are done correctly, uh, that the rules that are in place are actually followed um, in the district, and helping to guide the members as well in terms of how those meetings um, that happen should be run, so that the whole membership gets to have a say in the decision making process and that's I think what's really important about this is that Toastmasters is a membership organisation and um, so I'm just going to share some slides so we're talking tonight about club business meetings. Why should we have club business meetings? Does anyone know? I'm afraid I'm now going to struggle. So if uh, Rupert or John could help me with the chat. Nothing so far. Nope. Could I suggest that we are in effect a business of a sort? We have a uh, a revenue. We have an expenditure on our rooms. So we are effectively a, a business. Maybe everybody would think of us as a charity, but we are still a business. Yes. And I can now see some answers. So we've got to make decisions. Yes. And meetings, I think, should be about making decisions uh, and also a contribution that says that the club is run effectively and fairly and transparently, which, again, is a great answer. Uh, and that's absolutely correct. Um, if you bring it down to the simplest reason of why do we have club business meetings, the answer is because our governing documents tell us that we should. Um, so the reason that we have them is because we have a constitution, um, which there's governing documents for the whole organisation from the international to the district to the club level. And so the, each club meeting, each club within Toastmasters has a constitution which says we should have club business meetings, which are to do what everyone has put in the chat to make decisions, to make sure the clubs run effectively, fairly and transparently. Um, and 
to include people concerned running the club in making decisions, which is a great answer as well. And they actually quite a lot go into my next question, which is why, why should we care? Why should we care about having these business meetings? Um, and that is connected back to a lot of what people have been saying in the chat. Um, Postmasters is effectively a membership organization. It is an organization that is run by its members for its members. And the constitution effectively makes that all members are responsible for the organization. They get to make the decisions and that is what the club constitution effectively says. And what I love about membership organizations like Toastmasters is that the members that you find in Toastmasters care. They are people who want to participate. They're people who want to contribute and they're people who want to learn. And by participating uh, in the club as members and leaders, then they get to learn. They get to learn about leading an organization, as John said, which is essentially a, a business. And the learning that you can take from being um, a part of business meetings and how Toastmasters clubs and membership organizations are run, that learning applies outside of Toastmasters. So for example, you might have heard of what um, is known as the rise of ESG, which is within the corporate world, the importance of environmental, social and governance responsibilities. And there is a big, big focus in the world outside of um, it, just the world of business, essentially, on those things. And governance is a big part of that. And when big companies fail, as they do. You see um, stories in the news, for example, uh, what happened with Carillion, you've got Patisserie Valerie, any of those big high profile companies, there would have been a failure of governance there. And so actually we should care because there's a lot that we can learn and a lot that we can apply in our lives outside of Toastmasters by knowing these things. And the point about governance that I think is really important as well is that if you are stepping up to be a leader of an organization such as Toastmasters, then you're taking on a responsibility and you're being elected into that role and given a lot of, of trust and a lot of delegation of certain things by the members. Um, but if you follow the right governance process in terms of how you run the club in accordance with the constitution and what that asks you to do, that is a level of protection for the leaders of the club and the members of the club so that in the hopefully very unlikely event that something goes wrong then if you can show that you followed the correct governance procedures then there shouldn't be such a problem sometimes things do go wrong but if if something goes wrong and the right governance within an organization hasn't been followed then that is can cause problems for lots of people involved so i think that's part of why we should care we should care because um and members you know it's a it's a membership organization and members want to be involved and they have the right to be involved um in making those decisions and running the club and deciding on what that club looks like and for me i think in a membership organization the more that you communicate with your members the more that you encourage your members to participate and contribute the better members that you're going to have, the better club that you're going to have, because you want those members to be engaged in the club and you want those members to contribute to the future of the club. Um, so Rupa has put the link uh, to the club constitution in the chat, but um, just out of interest, how many people have read the club constitution of their Toastmasters club? Yes, excellent. Have to admit, no. I would hope and <laughs> expect, but my experience is perhaps not everyone might have done. Um, perhaps not everyone uh, in Toastmasters might have done. And hopefully people who are taking on leadership positions, and I know that some of the people in the audience definitely have leadership positions within Toastmasters, are a bit more aware of it. Um, but it's something that I think is important to signpost to members as well, that the way that this organization is governed, is governed is by this constitution. 
uh, because it sets out the responsibilities of members as well. So, sorry. So, the next question I have, which I've given you a little preview of, but hopefully you can read that, <laughs> is um, in when you're having a club business meeting, what do you tend to discuss? So again, if you put the answers in the chat, if what what do you think you need to discuss as a club in a business meeting? I put a lot about decision making. So we've got finances. Um, somebody said we've not had one before, but yeah, fair enough. I know that they don't always happen. Um, whether to go online or offline, yes. Anyone else? So we've got officer reports, um, yeah, current issues in the club. Budget is a good one, yes. And uh, marketing plans. So anything connected to what that club is doing. Um, and as also what we've discussed and agreed in the previous meeting. So that's very good meeting governance is to review previous decisions and agree that everyone agrees with what was agreed. So essentially reviewing the minutes and agreeing the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, also, um, some, lots of answers about how to grow the membership, how to retain members. Um, so essentially things that could contribute to the future success of the club. And also changing membership fees, which Great answer. Oh, look, there's so we've got loads and loads of answers in here. So I think the people in this webinar, I'm pleased to see um, not all, as I saw one answer, but a lot of them have been to these meetings and obviously take um, very active um, roles in those meetings and leading those meetings and what those meetings can look like in order um, for the club to make these decisions about their future plans, which is great. For those who might be watching this webinar who maybe haven't uh, been to a club meeting or because they don't always happen, maybe uh, it, in terms of what should be discussed in a club meeting. The first and the thing that I've seen the most done is when clubs have an annual business meeting and they tend to do that and the constitution tells them to. Um, I, the constitution says it should ideally be the first meeting in May um, and I've seen it around that time not always necessarily the first one and the constitution does say where practical um, and that is a business meeting where the members get to elect the future officers of the club and I do see those happen and I see elections happening every year in the clubs what I don't always see happening is some of the other issues that we've discussed um, and this slide here essentially sets out what could potentially and should be discussed in club business meetings um, according to the constitution. So the constitution says that the members of the club get to decide um, anything within this addendum um, of the standard club uh, constitution and all of these things are things that the members should decide upon. So the name of the club, I would guess it's relatively unlikely that that gets changed, but it's possible. Um, the membership com um, composition. So, for example, if there's geographical uh, restrictions on who can join the club, if there is, for example, corporate clubs, it might be just corporate members of that corporate. Um, there's clubs that the restriction might be, or if they're advanced clubs, they might say only members with a certain level. So if the club wanted to change that, they would need to consult the members and have a vote on that at a club meeting. Um, likewise, as was mentioned, um, the finances of the club and the dues and fees that are paid by club members if that's going to be changed and generally what happens in in meetings is that a decision changes something so if things stay the same generally um you don't need to discuss it every time it's decision making when something is going to change um that tends to be in a business meeting agenda so if um the 
if the fees of the club are going to change, then that needs to be presented and accepted by the membership. And the finances of the club and the fees, um, how that fits into it, so the, the income and the expenditure of the club should be presented on a regular basis to the, to the whole club members. And there should be a budget presented and accepted by the membership um, on an annual basis. Now, the executive committee Sarah, that's been elected. Sarah, do you want to take questions as we go? I think we're going to do a Q&A session at the end. Is OK, I'll happen? keep it till then. Thank you. OK. Um, so the yeah, so if the budget should be it, the executive committee prepares the budget and they use their they will discuss that and then present it to the membership, but it's the membership who should approve that. Um, the other big thing, uh, which is a current issue potentially, is how, where and when the club meets. So if the club wants to change the frequency of its meetings um, and potentially at the moment, whether they should be online or in person, then that should be discussed in a business meeting and agreed by the membership. And I appreciate that at the time of COVID, that, that this doesn't always work out because at one point there was a directive which came down from the international organization through the district, which said everyone needs to move online for very obvious reasons, given what happened in the pandemic. Um, but, and that was a directive that people had to comply with, but in the sense of, future decisions when that's a lot um, more open for clubs to decide then that should be something that clubs discuss with their members and make a decision in a business meeting um, and then there's other aspects but those I think are the very big ones that are set out in this addendum in terms of what should and could be discussed within a business meeting um, so that's the kind of thing that would be discussed in the club business meeting. And as I mentioned previously, most clubs do have at least one business meeting a year, which is when they elect officers. But as some Toastmasters clubs can have two, essentially two terms of office because they're having elections every six months, then every time they're going to elect officers, they need to have a business meeting and it needs to be decided on. By the membership um, and if there's vacancies so if for whatever reason somebody has to step down from being an officer of the club then the replacement for that person also needs to be elected by the membership therefore that also needs to go into um, a club business meeting for the members to discuss and decide so um, I am just going to, sorry, John, I did try and black my screen, but it didn't work. So I'm just going to stop <laughs> for a second. Um, so I just wanted to discuss quickly what, um, a, what a good meeting looks like. So what do you in the audience, what would you say is a good meeting? Again, put it in the chat if you can. So uh, Marilyn had her hand up. Let's, let's go a little bit interactive. Okay, great. Right. Yeah, um, a good meeting is people arrive, there's an agenda, people know what they set out to do, um, and there's time given to that. So for instance, our meetings, we, we put time in for the officers' um, reports so that there's the guidelines about how long it's about to take. And so I think that there, and there's a purpose of the meeting. So by the end of the meeting, you sort of, get hope to achieve what you set out to um, achieve, in the, you know, the intention. Yes, and um, that's my favourite thing. That's why I started with that slide. Start with why. Why are you doing this? What is the purpose? And I'm not a big fan of meetings which are just reporting. The, the report should have a purpose. And, and if you've elected people into these positions, then they are responsible to the membership. Um, but ideally, 
um, as we talked about at the start, then the purpose of meetings should generally be decision making. Um, so ideally, uh, if a big decision about the club needs to be made, that needs to go to a business meeting um, for the club. Uh, has an agenda I've seen in the chat as well and yes absolutely uh, it, and that goes into the purpose if you know what you're doing uh, and why you're doing it then you can set out what you're going to do uh, so what actually does this meeting look like and then everyone is on the same page and can come prepared to that meeting uh, so controlled and six time and that is quite often a function of how good the chairing of the meeting is and yes I think that the, a similar a similar point there in terms of the, the pacing of the meetings right and there's a balance there between going too slowly and too quickly and I think the, the really important part there is that what you've said is everyone's encouraged to contribute to the discussion and that is that is the biggest point within this is that good club good clubs have business meetings and those business meetings engage the members that the members of a toastmasters club care about the future of that club and are engaged and want to join in in the discussion of what the future success of that club looks like um, I think it was mentioned before as well that um, somebody mentioned what's really important is having minutes. So we know what we've decided and we've all agreed that that's right. That's really good, important governance with having a good meeting. Are there any uh, examples of what a bad meeting might look like that you'd like to share? I just think the opposite of what I said earlier on, Sarah. Um, people whack up, nobody really knows what's going on. Um, there's no timing for the meeting, so nobody knows how long they're going to be there. Um, nobody knows um, what the purpose is. Lots of reports, but we don't know the, you know, the intention of the reports and why we're doing it or you know how. So it's the opposite. There's no structure, no interaction, no timings, and no purpose, really. Yeah. Great. Uh, a talking shop we have <laughs> so <laughs> lots of people who maybe like to have their voices heard or complain about things but without actually um, maybe making any important decisions I think and I think good meetings are ones where everyone wants to contribute to making good decisions about the future of the club um, and yes uh, the if <laughs> if if you keep saying that something needs to happen and then it doesn't happen so everyone agrees something should happen but then nothing moves forwards so that's some, i think really helpful examples of what good and bad meetings look like and i think that the main points that we've come out with there is to have a purpose so and the purpose will often be dictated by the constitution so we're going to come back to the club constitution again the club constitution tells you what you should ideally be discussing in these meetings with your members um and those are the big points but any big decisions about the future of the club or anything major that might change in the club that should be discussed at a meeting and it's not just the club officers who can call a meeting uh, according to the constitution the members of the club as well if they think something needs to be discussed can ask for a club business meeting so i think that's really important to note is that club members are in control here <laughs> club members have the right to ask for a meeting and as a body of people decide so just a few meeting organization points to go over as well and this is all in um, the club constitution um, but just to highlight the important things when you're having a meeting the first one is quorum and that means how many people have to be there to mean that the meeting is permitted that it is it, it's a meeting that can make a decision 
and the quorum is a majority of the members of that club. So let's say your club has 30 members, you would need 16 of those members to be at your club business meeting in order for that to be a valid meeting. And each member has one vote. So in any decision, then generally, and there's lots of complications around this that we, could, that we won't go into, but for the most, the vast majority of decisions, it will be a majority of the people there who make the decision. So if you're voting for or against something, if 51% of the people who are there say yes, then that decision passes and the change is approved. I just want to... So I'm just going to, I'm just going to take my slides slightly out of order. In terms of talking about what a good, a good meeting looks like and some of the rules for meetings and governance of meetings we talked about, one of the biggest things is uh, how it's run. And that is set out in the constitution again. <laughs> Reaper, you heard, like noting down how many times I say constitution through this webinar. <laughs> if anyone's in any doubt, read the constitution. <laughs> but uh, what the constitution says is that in running a business meeting, then um, the first thing that takes precedence over everything is the constitution. But wherever there isn't a rule in the constitution, then you use Robert's Rules of Order, which is the lovely book that Reaper held up at the start and that is a guide to how effective meetings can be run and it's 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 complicated but also simple and essentially if you can um work out how to use robert's rules then you can run any meeting really effectively and engaging so the principles of robert's rules of order are that you only discuss one topic at a time. So if you're having an election for the president, you don't then have an election for the VP at the same time before making the first decision you're making, or you have an election and then decide you want to talk about the budget at the same time. To keep it simple and understandable for everyone, one topic at one time. The second principle is that the majority rules, but the minority is protected. And that means that everyone has the right to be heard and everyone should be heard and everyone has the right to say what they want to say, assuming they are a voting member of that club. Non-members wouldn't have that same right. And the other important point about Robert's Rules of Order is that personal attacks aren't allowed. And it's maybe not something that you think about in organisations such as Toastmasters, where hopefully we get on and everyone is lovely and committed to the same cause that we have but sometimes controversial things happen and you might have to make a controversial decision and the point to remember is that you're having a debate and it's not about the person it's about the debate and you can disagree but Robert's Rules of Order allows you to disagree and, and debate an issue and then make a majority decision and everyone can go home satisfied that they have their voice heard and a decision was made that the majority of people wanted to be made. So those are the general principles of Robert's Rules of Order. Um, and I know that there's been other, other webinars on this subject, so I'm not going to go really deep into Robert's Rules of Order because I could talk about how that all works for a very long time. And the lucky recipient of a book can read all about it. But I boiled down Robert's Rules of Order essentially to um, a very simple process which I'm going to share with you so you can see that. Um, so let's share this. And... So yes, the way that Robert's Rules of Order works is there's a motion, it needs to be proposed and seconded, there's then time to discuss that motion and then you make a decision. So the reason that you have a proposer and a seconder is that maybe some really, really, really keen person in your club decides to propose that 
we should have a Toastmasters meeting every day. Now, I love Toastmasters, but possibly don't have time to have a club meeting every day. So if nobody else in the club thinks that's a good idea, then there's no point in even wasting time in a meeting to discuss it. So if there's no seconder for that proposal, then you don't even need to discuss that motion. But the point is, as long as it's within what can be decided within the realms of the constitution, the members have the right to put forward a motion. So any member of a club can put forward a motion that they think is to the benefit of the future of that club. But somebody needs to second it. So they need to convince at least one other person in the club that it's worth at least having a discussion on this motion. So in a club meeting, whatever proposal it is, and that's the same with I'm electing uh, the next president should have a proposer and a seconder. This is our proposed budget for the next year. Somebody, probably the treasurer would propose it and then somebody else would second it. And then, so whatever it is that is being proposed in that meeting needs to be proposed and seconded. And then that means it's, it's a good motion that we should at least discuss as a club. And then it's opened up to discussion. And that's when everyone has the right to be heard Although, again, there are rules that it's not really worthwhile just repeating the same point as somebody else has. So in a well chaired meeting, you only the chair should only seek new points or different points rather than somebody just saying, I agree with John. I agree with Rupert. That doesn't really help just making the same point over and over again. So you have that discussion. And if it's maybe a more difficult decision, people might speak for or against what's being proposed. And then eventually you make a decision. This is where I'm not going into any more detail because I think you'll probably need to watch a different webinar on that for time purposes, um, because there's lots of different decisions you can make. You can vote yes or no, a very straightforward vote on the motion, but there's also things such as, oh, we're not quite ready to decide. We're gonna to have to defer that. We need more information. Maybe we want a subcommittee of people to look into this and come back with a report. Um, or maybe we're going to amend what that motion is. But to really get into that, please watch one of the lovely District 91 webinars on more detailed parliamentary procedure. But if you have um, a club business meeting, if you, if you just remember these pretty simple four things, you can work out whether the flow of that meeting is working. So for any motion, it should, it should be proposed, seconded it, you have a discussion, and then you decide. And as previously stated uh, in a club, every paid up member of that club has one vote. And in the majority of cases, it is the majority that rules. So as, as long as 51% or more members vote for the motion, then the motion passes and that change will come into effect in the club meeting. Um, I'm just going to show one other slide, which is kind of related to club business, um, but not, it's not entirely about the club business, but it is um, because I wanted to also just highlight um, how much um, power <laughs> clubs have in this uh, organization. Sorry, my mouse has decided to go funny. So this slide is where decisions are made. Um, and although I've put the club at the bottom, the club is actually the most important part of this. Um, so Toastmasters International, so the overarching organization I've put at the top, but actually let's start at the bottom. So in the club, any business meeting, each club member has a vote each. We then have areas and according to the constitution, the overall governing documents of uh, Toastmasters International, we should have area council meetings. And at those kind of meetings would be things like electing the next area director, but anything to do with the business of that area should be discussed and decided at those meetings. And the representatives at those meetings to make up the voting body there are the club presidents of that area, the VPEs, and the VPs of membership of all the clubs in the area. And same principles apply. You should have an agenda. You should um, 
talk about those important decisions and then those clubs vote on behalf of their clubs. Um, at the district level, we have district council meetings and the club presidents and the vice presidents of education are the people who make those decisions. So the district leadership team will have discussed what they think um, is right for the district and they'll make those proposals to the district, but it's ultimately the leaders of the clubs that make those decisions. And likewise, at the Toastmasters international level, we have an annual business meeting at the international conference, which takes place in August. And clubs in, in that business meeting also have two votes each. So the leaders of clubs have the opportunity to influence Toastmasters International at club, area, district and international level. And so I think my point here is, I'm not sure everyone knows that. Um, and I'm not sure that the members potentially know that. And those, the, the, those leaders in our clubs, it is their, they are voting and making representations on behalf of the clubs. That's part of what they've been elected to do. And ideally, I would suggest what they should be doing is if, say, let's say the district, it's probably the most likely one that's going to come up a lot, is proposing to change something within that district that could affect their club, then I would suggest that the club presidents and vice presidents of education who are voting on behalf of their club should discuss that with their club members at a club business meeting before taking that decision and um, making their vote. So, for example, um, and something that happens every year and is the election of, let's say, the division directors. And quite often we're fortunate in District 91 to have competition between who might be the division director for your division. And if you're a club in that division, the, the leader of your, of your division, your division director, could very much influence what happens for the next year in your division. And you might have, you're going to have different candidates. How are you going to make that decision as a club as to who to support? Ideally, the club presidents and vice presidents of education should take that decision and canvas their club members, which they can do at a club business meeting. So I just wanted to give that wider context as well of that Toastmasters members have that influence going all the way up to the international level of Toastmasters International. And that is why it's really important that we have these club business meetings, that the members of Toastmasters have that opportunity to discuss these important decisions that are happening within their club level, but also at every level of the organisation. And I've talked about a lot about this being a membership organisation and how much that is important to communicate with members and to encourage participation and contribution by members of a membership organization. But again, for me, I learned so much from being part of a membership organization, which I took outside to my job. And it's, for me, it's the same with employees. And if you're a leader of a team, the more that you can communicate and involve your employees, in decisions and how your team's going to be run and that they feel involved and engaged in the company that you're a part of, the more likely you are to have employees who are going to be engaged and want to contribute and feel valued and um, wanting to stay a part of that organisation. So that kind of brings me back to the why. Why should we care? I mean, first of all, governance is good, um, but it is it is a wider conversation of how relevant all of these things are to our lives outside Toastmasters as well. It's important in Toastmasters and it's important outside of it. Um, so that's the main points that I wanted to cover. Um, I know we're going to move to Q&A, but I just want to check with Rupa if there's anything else that she wanted um, me to cover that I haven't. No, I think uh, there was one point I just, just wanted to clarify a point, but you, you clarified it anyway, and that was just to do with uh, essentially, yes, the presidents and VP should be putting motions and the proposals from international and the district to the membership. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure how often that happened. 
Great. So we will now do Q&A.